Cafe Poland, and also virtually online. Actually, if Tech can give me permission to share screen, uh, if you can give me permission to share screen, I can share. My name is Jennifer. I should be in the room. If that's possible. If not, I'm happy to just go through very quickly. Oh, that is not me. <laughs> I don't know what happened here. <laughs> can we have this back on? Oh, okay. But I'm still not able to share. Well, in the meantime, as they're fixing that, um, just a brief recap of, of last year's uh, Summer Eve record. It um, was in Katowice. We had a uh, EC election last year where we welcomed two new EC members. Um, Amrita uh, Chowdhury over there. Ooh, maybe, maybe we can just go back to the... It may be a little too difficult. Let's go back there. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay, now we have Zoom. That's great. Uh, let me just bring this up and talk through as I share. Give me one second. And the second EC member we welcomed um, for last year's election was Henriette Esterhuizen. She sends her apologies. She's actually currently moderating the youth summits at the same time. So she sends her apologies and she, you know, also the best wishes for our General Assembly. Um, we also went through and... Uh, no, I don't, I don't believe, uh, yes, I'm going to get to that. So, um, one of our EC members, um, Brian Cute was, had to step down from the executive committee because he had a new job, which then had a COI to our mission. And subsequently we invited, um, uh, the third candidate who received the most amount of votes in, um, the 2021 elections to join the executive committee. And her name is Fiona Fonga. I don't believe she is here with us today either, but she is also, I've been a very uh, uh, upstanding member in our community, has been doing a lot of work in the EC as well. We're not able to find the share button. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, so I'm still not able to share, but I'll just finish the wrap up for this. Um, we also had uh, a go going through the activity report of last year, as well as the financial budgets. Um, 2021, we had Jimson, who I think might have been in the room earlier, but it's not. Oh, there he is, Jimson, who was our treasurer uh, in the year before. He prepared the financial reports. Um, and then we also, as a whole, as a general assembly with the members, um, adopted the annual budget as well as the uh, going forward budget uh, for this year. Um, for fundraising, there were several points suggested by IGFSA members last year. Um, am I able to share a screen yet? Let me try. If I'm able to share a screen, we can go through as I'm... Be able to see. And it will show up momentarily. Perfect. So there was some um, points that was discussed uh, in the fundraising portion, which I would anticipate that we will also have this year. Um, there was a point raised that uh, we could consider um, looking at funding for schools of internet governance. Um, there was some fundraising outreach activities that Chris Mondini very kindly undertook with Brian Cute last year. Um, to create a value proposition to look at expanding the donor base for IGFSA, which is always a very important item. And then, of course, we had um, Vince, who is here in the room with us as well, announcing a pledge on behalf of Google, uh, a very, very generous pledge on behalf of Google via the Tides Foundation to go to the IGF operation and via, you know, the small grants that we give to the separate I um, NRI requests that we receive and youth IGF requests requests that we receive throughout the year. Finally, I think um, Marcus, our chair, noted that it might have been possible to schedule a brainstorming session on fundraising. We weren't able to actually do that last year um, because of various uh, logistical um, problems, but we're hoping also perhaps to be able to do it this year. 
And then finally, there was uh, a small change of a articles of association based on the recommendation of the EC last year. The uh, small change was to note that the IGFSA has um, uh, currently secretariat services provided by Dot Asia organization. The, mo the modification is basically to remove the line item that uh, would show um, Internet Society as the secretariat. So it was very minor administrative change. And um, that concludes my summary of the um, of last year's summary record. Thank you, Jennifer, also for congratulating you for mastering the technical challenges with the screen sharing. Are there any comments on the on the summary record of last week? The General Assembly additions, correct? Yes, please, please deserve. This is just a question about the current state of finances. So as we go into the calendar 2023, can we get a sense for what you have available? Thank you. That will be part of the following agenda items, financial report, and, so, and also budget. If not, then can I take it if there are no comments and no objections that we can approve for the record the annual, the summary record of last year's General Assembly as sub submitted to the membership and that will be posted accordingly on the website. So I take it as there are no comments that there is agreement and it is so decided. So we have approval of last year's, the summary record of last year's General Assembly. With that, we come to the next agenda item, Executive Committee Election which we have shared with the membership with two members of the executive committee, Eduardo Santoyo and myself, come to the end of their second term. We have term limitations in our bylaws, two times three years. So we open up uh, the election procedure. Uh, there were no statements of interest del delivered within the deadline we had given. So there is nothing really to add here, unless uh, somebody present in the room would like to declare their interest, we could at a later stage have an election do that in an online procedure. But right now, we cannot do that as we would have to have some time to consider a candidacy. Uh, our bylaws are flexible. You don't have a fixed number of members. It says it should be at least five and not more than nine members. With Eduardo's retirement from the executive committee, we are, have a little bit of a hole in the Latin American region. So it would be nice if we could have a candidate from that part of the world, from the Gulag part of the world. So I would kindly encourage you to think about it. If somebody on the spot can say yes i'm interested we could take notice and as i said not proceed to the election now we prepare an online procedure for that if not we can still leave that open and get back to it subsequently is there anyone who has questions comments on this agenda item or would like to declare the interest to serve on the executive committee Yeah, uh, my name is Kashi Pradeel and uh, currently I am serving as a board member for Dota Asia and um, uh, I am from the Asia Pacific region, I'm currently residing in uh, Gulf in Oman and uh, I'm very much interested in, you know, take, being part of uh, the, the committee and taking things forward. Okay, note has been taken yeah. and as I said we can start an online process we don't need to have physical elections right now here <clears throat> the only condition is that you need to have paid your membership fee that you have to be a, a member in good standing but, uh, any other declaration of interest again specifically i'm looking at people from the Krulak region <laughs> 
Flavio, any interest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it looks I am the, the only one from the Grulak region here. I am in good standing. I could volunteer, yeah. Not only in good standing, but you're an excellent, you're an excellent candidate. And it would be great to have somebody from okay. So we do have two candidates for two open seats. And I think I would leave that to my successor as a chair of the executive committee to, and with the secretariat to formalize the process in an online procedure. But I think this would be excellent that we can fill, and also for the geographical uh, distribution, this is one uh, important aspect that we have diversity in our executive committee. Thank you for that. Then we can go to the next agenda item, that is adoption of the contents of the reports and financial statements for the year. Again, back to Jennifer and also to our treasurer, Nigel. Jennifer first, please. Thank you, Marcus. Now everything is showing online, which is great. Um, let's see if I can stop share and do a new share. So the annual report uh, from uh, 2021 to 2022, this was also shared with the membership um, through the mailing list. There has been a very small um, adjustment uh, on the list of the NRIs that was um, supported because we, although we, uh, uh, as uh, the EC has approved and uh, the funding to Moldova IGF, they actually had some technical and logistical difficulties um, being able to actually hold their meeting. So we informed them that we were happy to have them you know, submit again when they finally do uh, prepare the, uh, the actual meeting for Moldova IGF. Okay, so um, briefly going through the report, um, this is just a recap of my previous recap of the uh, General Assembly that was held uh, in the Katowice IGF. So um, we also called for a moment of silence because um, one of our former EC members, Makan Fay, had unfortunately and very sadly passed away in 2021. So we did hold a moment of silence for him then and it's appropriate to mention again here since we are in his home continent. He was a pillar of the uh, community here and we uh, held in very high esteem. Um, I've already mentioned that we've had the two new candidates, uh, Ms. Amrita Chaudhary and also Ms. Henriette Esterhuizen, and also we also welcome Ms. Fiona Asonga to the um, IGFSA EC. Here you can see the full EC um, that's constituted here. I'm going to go over the line a little bit. So we have Eduardo. This is the full EC that we had uh, for 2021 to 2022. I'm not going to go through all their names. You should already know them all here. Um, uh, this year, we've had uh, eight meetings over the course of this year. We've also had separate uh, uh, individual committee meetings that were convened to talk about uh, expanding the donor base. And also we had a, um, a call with an expert in the uh, private sector kind of talking about how private sector and big tech think about, um, you know, their philanthropy and also, you know, what, how we're able to, to target our messaging to be able to create more, more space here for them to contribute to the IGF as a whole, as well as IGFSA. Uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a little bit of an uphill uh, climb here. I think uh, the EC has, has done very good work this year to try to get some inroads um, in the, in the network, network there. I think we'll hear more from Chris Mondini, if he's online, uh, and also other EC members in the fundraising category of our, uh, of our General Assembly. Um, we have the secretary that, and the secretariat, which is responsible for the administrative and day-to-day -day functions of IGFSA that is currently being performed by myself and also Dot Asia organization. We still have our accountant who is based in um, Switzerland. He is Michael Parrott. He's the one who helped us prepare the financial reports, which we'll see later. And here we have the membership categories. We haven't changed since our founding. We have two categories of membership. Um, one is the individual membership, which is uh, with an annual membership dues of 25 uh, US dollars. And then the other is the organizational membership with the um, annual membership dues of 100 uh, US dollars. Um, in this year, we have um, three new individual members and one organizational member 
who joined the association, which brings our total registered members to 260. Um, here you see the names of our new members. Hello. I will read them out. And then um, there's a brief uh, mention here in the paragraph of the activity report on fundraising. Um, so in 2022, um, IGFSA received contributions from Google via the Tides Foundation of the amounts. I mean, this is the, the net amount that we received. Uh, it's a nine, 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 wait, 99,090 US dollars. Sorry about that. Can't read numbers. Uh, from from uh, ICANN, we received um, 300, uh, not 300, 30,078 uh, US dollars. From the NRO, we received uh, $48,950. And then we also received from membership fees, which is not really constitute of a very big amount as a primary source of funding. Uh, we did receive uh, $1,125 as regular membership dues and individual uh, donations. Um, we'll have a detailed breakdown later when we look at the financial report. Um, for the budget and allocation of funds, we have agreed in the 2027, uh, sorry, 2017 uh, General Assembly that we would be prioritizing the uh, NRI requests that we receive. Um, we have this year received um, and approved three regional and sub-regional IGFs. 10 national initiatives, and then also uh, four youth initiatives. And this brings a total contributed for these uh, requests in 2022 to uh, 26,000 US dollars. And then it brings us to the cumulative, cumulative total that IGF has given to the NRIs and youth NRIs to date to 525,000 US dollars. If I can move to the projected funding allocation from 2023, you'll take a look at the financial situation later when we go to the financial reports, but this is just a rough estimate of funding that we will be uh, allocating in 2023, also subject to, of course, the financial health of the IGFSA um, accounts and, and situation as well. So for UN IGF Trust Fund, we have for the past several years contributed 10,000 US dollars annually to them. Uh, our projected, oh goodness, that's very interesting. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'll just go on when you can fix the display. For the national, sub-regional, regional, and youth IGS, we're projecting uh, uh, quite a, a generous sum of uh, 70,000 US dollars. I think um, we're anticipating more requests coming in next year because every year there will be additional new uh, NRIs, youth initiatives, as well as sub-regional and regional initiatives uh, uh, popping up, which is also very healthy for the NRI ecosystem as a whole, as well as, you know, the general IGF ecosystem. So we will have that uh, um, projected. For accessibility, which is the captioning website accessibility and improvements, we will be uh, projecting an allocation of 20,000 US dollars. This will include the captioning that we currently already support for the MAG meetings for the NRI meetings, and I believe also for the dynamic coalitions, if I'm not wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and also for the IGF website, they've requested, um, you know, an allocation to maintain the accessibility standards and, and I think the whatever um, technology that they're currently using on the website. So this is maintenance fee for the IGF uh, official website. And then we have the projected administrative um, expenses, which is the secretariat fees, the banking fees, and our accountant fees of twenty thousand um, US dollars. I think I've mentioned already the contribution to the trust fund. Uh, a contribution of ten thousand US dollars was given to the UN trust fund um, this year, which brings our cumulative total to um, three hundred and ten thousand US dollars to date. Now we get to the funding requests that we received this year and have approved. Um, this year we received uh, three requests uh, for the regional and sub-regional initiatives. The first is the, uh, I believe it's Central Asian IGF and Eurodig, and the third being the East African IGF. The asterisk you see right now there is because it's currently still being processed and in, uh, in, in, in progress right now. The following national IGFs were approved to and received funding. The IGF Cameroon, 
uh, FGI Benin, Comoros IGF, Kenya IGF, Armenia IGF, Liberia IGF, Guatemala IGF, Ukraine IGF, who actually just had their meeting, I think, several days ago under very difficult circumstances, um, South Sudan IGF, and Uganda IGF. The following youth IGFs were also approved to re support uh, funding. Uh, youth IGF Ukraine also happened a few days ago under quite difficult circumstances. Youth IGF Georgia, Youth IGF Bangladesh, and Youth IGF India. Um, we have the IGF contingency funds, which would be, uh, I think, in the projected administrative fees. So that's probably looking at the 20,000 US dollars, um, the projected funding allocation for 2023. And then for accessibility funding, um, the contribution from Google in previous years have been earmarked, but not this year. Um, for enhancing the accessibility of the IGF, this is used to provide real-time transcription uh, for the MAG, for the dynamic coalitions, for the NRIs. And we're also supporting, like I said before, the costs, the operational costs of the collaborative and accessible, accessi accessible sorry about that, linguistics in the new IGF website. Um, finally, we come to the outreach and communications. This year, we have continued to have a small group in, within the EC to look at value proposition for donors. Um, there's been various targeted efforts messages and presentations made to different stakeholder groups. Um, several of them targeted uh, private sector as well as the domain name industry. I believe both um, Brian Cute and uh, Chris Mandini thereafter uh, did present to the registry stakeholder group within ICANN to, first of all, uh, introduce them to the subject of NRIs and how they are important to the IGF ecosystem, as well as looking at how some of the registries, some of the large registries already do support some NRIs in their region or in their country, and for them to also consider looking at supporting it through uh, IGFSA, since we do place a priority on funding uh, requests that come from uh, developing countries, as well as the Global South. So these would be the NRIs um, and youth initiatives that are not already covered by the IGF Secretariat grants that they do every year. Uh, finally, there was a dedicated uh, communication messaging sent uh, via the IGF Secretariat to let the uh, network that they hold uh, know more about the IGFSA's work and how they support the IGF uh, ecosystem and also the, the NRIs as a whole. Um, and I think that is it for the... Um, oh, here we go again. Ah, okay, I see. That might be the case. So I'll stop here for any questions and I'll hand it back to Marcus. Thank you for this comprehensive. <laughs>
Um, I'm asking because um, for a coordinator of the European Summer School, Google was in the past a direct sponsor. And if this money goes now via the IGFSA, which is, I think, a good move and understandable, we should have clarity to which extent schools on internet governance are uh, illegal to apply via the IGFSA for funds that in the past we or others as well have possibly put, uh, uh, received uh, directly from Google. Thank you very much. Thank you for this question. It's an excellent question. The executive committee has discussed this with time decided not to provide funding to summer schools on internet governance, but this is was a decision applying for then that may well be opened in the future. A decision was taken because we had a difficult time budget-wise. We also had to change our banking relations. But now the funding looks more stable and this is something the executive committee might wish to reconsider. But as I said, it was a decision taking at the time but not for uh, for the future, it's not cast in iron. Are there other questions, comments? Yes, Avri, also a former executive committee member. Please, Avri. Yeah, thank you, uh, Avri Doria. Just a quick question, when you list participants, is there a, are they all paid up participants, I mean, uh, members? Are they all members in good standing, or is it anyone who was ever a member, whether they were in good standing or not? Thanks. Um, thank you, Avi, for the question. I'm assuming you're meaning the up to uh, 260 registered members. Yes, there are members to date. They're not all members who are in good standing. In good standing are members who have paid up for the particular calendar year, which I believe we have. I don't have the, the, the number we have on right now. I think it's around 25 to 26 people who are paid up. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Oh, yes, Amrita. Thank you. Um, I think for many of the members, they are, they are not sure that they have to renew paying the fees um, to be members of good standing. So we were thinking from the EC that we may want to send a reminder to all the members um, to pay their fees because even I was not aware that you know you have to renew it each year because there's no reminder coming. Thank you. Excellent comment. Yes, uh, it's it's always worthwhile. Uh, but I mean, I think it's a problem many associations face. It's sometimes difficult to chase after the members to remind them that there is an annual membership fee. If there are no other comments, then I would suggest we go to the financial statement. Oh, sorry, there was a okay. We have a request for okay. 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 My name is Peter King for the record. Uh, I entered a, a little bit late. I just want to commend the IGFS for their uh, role they are playing in terms of strengthening the NRIs. And I would like to commend the ECs and everybody that was able to assist Liberia in terms of strengthening the CA edition of the IGF. So I came a little bit late, but then I just had to take this opportunity to stand an impressive thing to helping in our eyes, like in this developing country like Liberia, to be able to host it again successfully. Thank you for that comment, and uh, it's always welcome to receive positive feedback and to know that it actually has an impact. I mean, I often said it's a little bit like seed money. Yes, my name is Naza Nicholas Krama. I am the currently coordinator for the Tanzania IGF. And um, as you go along with, um, with the, the meeting, we would also like to, um, uh, to get a clarification on the, um, um, the conditions for applying for those who would like to apply for the funding. Um, I think it is important for uh, for those who are applying, whether online, uh, I think it is online, um, to know um, the, the, the criteria, first of all. And second, if uh, they apply and they do not, uh, for some reason, qualify, 
I think it is, uh, it is also important uh, for the IGFSA to, you know, to write a letter saying uh, you didn't qualify for this specific reason. I think it is, um, it is a polite to, for those who are, you know, struggling um, from uh, the sites, you know, out in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the field to uh, get this information, this critical information um, uh, to their local constituencies about the internet governance um, to, you know, to know that their efforts have been recognized when, when they apply and they did not qualify, you know, they, they also appreciate uh, that way. Thank you. Thank you for the question. I thought that our website was sufficiently clear, but maybe it's not. And I would also like to ask the secretary to look into that, but essentially it's very simple. We only provide fundings to NRIs that have been recognized by the IGF secretariat and that are in good standing with the IGF Secretariat. That is, they have pr provided a report of their last meeting, provided an annual report and so on. So the process is very simple. Whenever we have a request, we ask the IGF Secretariat and ask Anya in particular, you know her all, whether she can say, yes, these are, uh, this request is from an NRI in good standing. If she says yes, then normally the executive committee approves it. And yes, we can always improve also the communication with those who are maybe who guide them to make sure in a nice way that they provide all the elements and documentation that necessary, that they have a functioning website and so on. Does that answer your question? Okay, thank you. And there was another request for the floor, please. Yes, my name's Grace Ingabire. Uh, I'm the coordinator of the Rwanda IGF. So I'm happy to be here. This is my first global IGF, and I'm interested to be a member of the IGF association. So if I can, I don't know who I can talk to, <clears throat> probably offline or after this meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, and it's always nice to welcome new members of the association. Thank you. And there's another request. Yes. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Abdi Jiril Basharbong. So I'm coordinator of the National IGF of Chat. So thank you for IGF. I say, I think that uh, is the place to congratulate them what you have to, uh, done because it's very difficult during the COVID to assist or to help to support uh, the NRIs. So thank you, a congratulation about that. So I have a uh, reflection that now that's emerging School of Internal Governance. So I saw that there's uh, some of our leader of the DC there here. So uh, the reflection is that how to incorporate the School of Internal Governance to receive the fund because nowadays in our different countries that's emerging of school material governance is the only way that we are seeing people emerging in the IG ecosystem. So I think that we need to take this in the, in the account in our planning, planification of uh, next year. Yo, thank you so much. Thank you for that. And I for communication also, I need to add before, uh, when Mary Lane says there, so we receive a lot of things about communication. So we need to see, no, you are, do, you are doing a lot of things about that, but communication thing, you need to review all that and to add, uh, uh, I cannot say English also for not speaking also. So you need to try sometimes to translate it. So we are doing with the Google, congratulations for the Google, but <laughs> but uh, you need to do an other language also. It's very important, very key because as we are moving uh, in second level of uh, IG ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you for these comments. They were very helpful. Is um, is the application? Uh, uh, can you apply anytime? I mean, can is it anytime? Well, no. Yes, you can anytime, but we strongly recommend that you do it as soon as possible, not just last minute. You do oh, it two, okay. two days before the meeting, that would be too late. You know, we need also some time to process it, 
And also, if you want the funds in time, the sooner you make the request, the better, because the transfer of funds usually can also take some time. And as uh, you saw in the report with these NRIs listed with an asterisk because there were problems with the financial transaction. So the sooner you apply, the better. But we said four weeks would be preferred as a minimum, not shorter than that. And it's in your interest if you want the funds in time to help you to organize the meeting. If it comes after the meeting, it's sometimes difficult. Thank you for answering my stupid question. Uh, Are there other questions? Jess? Perhaps I could. Yes, please. Thank yes. You. Perhaps I just make a comment on uh, on, on, on what you said. Uh, yes, I mean, we we welcome applications in, in, in good time that allows us to assess them. As a, as a, as a committee, we, we rarely turn down applications. Uh, we're, we're here to support uh, the national and regional initiatives, and we want to be very supportive of them. And we have been both the youth part of the, uh, 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 the national IGFs and the regional IGFs. But of course, we do look at the applications uh, and we we feel it's uh, uh, an obligation on us as a committee to look at the applications because we we have limited funds at the moment, uh, as we'll explain, we we're able uh, to project that we'll be able to support uh, uh, the applications that come to us in 2023. But in we're not, if you like, out to support uh, initiatives that perhaps are, are really well funded and have you know great sponsors and that's excellent if if if, if you have that uh, but we'll we'll obviously uh, uh, in terms of our uh, financial support we'll be looking to support everyone we we can but we'll be focusing clearly on the, on those that uh, need the support thank you thank you Nigel with that can we move on and essentially I would ask you then to approve uh, the uh, activity report as presented by Jennifer. I will do it by assuming that we have a tacit agreement as there's no objection and if, as there is no objection, I take it that the activity report has been approved as proposed. It is so decided and it will be posted on the website. And with that, we come to the financial statement. And again, I pass on the floor to our treasurer. Nigel, can you present? Um, can we please allow the Zoom room to be shown on screen? Um, I'm sharing screen right now. Yeah. Thank you. Th thank you very much. And uh, certainly I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be brief, uh, <laughs> as this is perhaps not the most important part. But first of all, uh, very much uh, thanks to the contributions uh, that we've received this year, which were noted in the, uh, in the annual report. Uh, Thanks to uh, the Ties Foundation, thanks to Google, thanks to Vint for facilitating uh, uh, this. Thank you also to ICANN and the uh, uh, and the NROs for, uh, for 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 their support in this in this regard. So, in terms of the in, in terms of this uh, sheet, perhaps we can start at the uh, in, in terms of total assets. You can uh, you can see the total assets we've. We've, we've got this is in uh, in, in Swiss francs uh, for 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 those that don't know Swiss Swiss francs. I mean, <laughs> they're not quite as much as dollars, but I, I suppose near near the dollar mark. Uh, and if we go if we go up, I'll, I'll, so that's the uh, total assets and the net assets, uh, 2000 and, uh, 2009, uh, thousand. There was there's some liabilities. The liabilities are are clearly those that we're uh, funds that uh, are still to be allocated. And so if we go further down uh, to the uh, total uh, revenues, 
Uh, so the 178 uh, here, 179. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I've got a different figure here. <laughs> there is a, uh, 178, 179 is the uh, is 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 the revenues, and you can see that the revenues come from membership fees of 840 and 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 the and the contributions which we've just noted. And of course, one thing that uh, has been said already is that we're very keen to, if you like, broaden uh, the donor base. We're very keen to have more members, both corporate members and individual members, because not only does this broaden the financial base, but I think it, it gives, a, or the executive committee, we think it gives us a, a broader uh, a sort of base of legitimacy uh, to an extent in terms of the... Uh, uh, the funding we get and then the funding uh, we disperse so if we go uh, if we go further down uh, to the uh, 32,000 uh, figure that's the uh, total expenditure uh, that's been uh, mentioned already to an extent that's made up of the uh, the, the the grants that we give uh, the 20 20,000 up there and the and the and the different uh, and the different fees so we no entertainment at all uh, <laughs> you'll be pleased to know, uh, uh, bank fees, professional fees, the transcription uh, services, uh, uh, etc. So if we go further down, if, if, we, if we may, uh, so the total expenses, as I said, 32,000, uh, and then uh, if we go right down to the bottom, we see the 2009 figure uh, again there in terms of the funding, in terms of the funding balance. Uh, so that's the that's the, the the sort of statement of the financial position, as, as you saw uh, you saw in the overall report, the uh, the different uh, NRIs that we supported uh, during the last uh, year in in 2022 up to up to 15th of November, and of of course we're projecting to uh, to be able to fund uh, more. I mean, we, we fund as the applications come in, as I, as I said, and uh, we're obviously encouraging through our newsletter, through our outreach activities for uh, uh, IGFs to come forward uh, to us. So I, I think I'll, 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 I'll stop there, but willing to take uh, questions. Thank you for that. And just an explanation, there's sometimes uh, strange figures from our donors, sort of 29,700, whatever. It means there were banking fees involved. Usually the donors <coughs> give us a round figure, but it looks then a bit strange, just as an explanation. Are there any questions to the financial, as regards the financial statement? Yes, please, Vint. So just uh, for clarity, oh, I see I've got two microphones now. That'll be fine. <laughs> I'll hold you all hostage. Um, I just for clarity, then you're starting, roughly speaking, starting the new year with 147,000 uh, Swiss francs, not counting the balance of the bond, of the fund. You're se separating that out, and your uh, budget is 120,000 roughly. So uh, you are not planning to overspend relative to what you currently have available. You could survive for a year. Uh, without any further contributions, not that I'm encouraging that, I'm just <laughs> making the Thank observation. You, so that's good fiscal management that, uh, that you have a runway of, of well over, well, not well over, but you have a runway of a, about a year, maybe a year and a quarter uh, at the current plan budget. Am I uh, interpreting this correctly? Yeah, yes. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Vint. I mean, you know, as, as we said before, we're, you know, the, the, the committee is in a position where we're, we're, we're demand-led, if, if you like, to an extent. And we, we encourage that uh, de demand in that it, it's really excellent to see the proliferation of uh, the national and regional initiatives. And we, we recognize that as we come out of the pandemic, as things uh, go on to a more stable footing, then perhaps there will be more uh, 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 physical meetings uh, arranged during 2022, which will will fund and as, as, as Vince said our, our projections uh, are, are conservative perhaps but uh, as, as our chair said if uh, if the demand is there then uh, as, as long as they're appropriate requests we'll we'll certainly endeavor to 
to meet them. Uh, and of, of course, as we go forward, we're 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 we're, de we're dependent on our on our on our donors, and we, as I say, want to broaden the donor base. But we're we're ex extremely uh, grateful for the uh, contributions uh, we give. Uh, perhaps I ought to just uh, I ought to have said that give thanks to our accountant Michael Parrott, uh, who, uh, who who we work with closely in in approving all these. Uh, uh, Funds, uh, it's not not trivial uh, uh, where where you you're dealing with uh, banks in in different countries and different currencies and uh, uh, aspects like that. Thank you. Thank you for that. And one brief comment also on what Nigel said about broadening the donor base. It's also the message we get from some of our biggest contributors. They are more comfortable if they're not the only ones they would like to see that the broadening of our donor base but please so lee mcknight syracuse university uh good to be back good to see you marcus and other friends i just have a comment could you just scroll back up a little bit um about no above yeah okay. 2021 2020 no you had to you have the same i think there's a typo right mm -hmm. So before you approve the budget, you should uh, note the typo. And I'm done with my prof professorial correction. Thank you for that. It's always good to be meticulous with uh, numbers and figures, yes. Oh, sorry, uh, one of those dates was the end of 2021. And then the other one was as of uh, 15 November. So that should be 22, you're right. With these corrections, can I take it that we can approve the financial statements as submitted? I see nodding in the room and I see no objections, so I take it the statement has been approved and it is so decided and we will post it accordingly on the website with these corrections. Thank you for noticing this. It's always very welcome to have additional careful eyes. <laughs> Thank you. Right, the next item on the agenda would be approval of the annual budget based upon the recommendation by the executive committee. <coughs> Chris Mondini had agreed to introduce that item, but I can't see him. Oh, Chris is, oh yes, of course, he's remotely, he's not physically here. Can we? While they are trying to sort that out, to give Chris the floor, I can also say, Jennifer mentioned the difficulties the Ukraine IGF had when they held a meeting last week, just really difficult. And Oksana also sent me an email. She was unable to log in and she would have loved to be here, send her greetings, but due to the difficulties they face in a war zone, it also affects the internet she uh, was very grateful for our support. But with that, Chris, can we give you the floor, please? Just checking, do you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear, excellent. Oh, lovely. Uh, my name's Chris Mondini. Uh, my day job is with ICANN. Uh, I am a proud member of this executive committee of IGFSA, and very sorry I can't be with you. I just wanted to make a couple of comments which really echo those that have been made already and that's about the importance of fundraising uh, and it's important for a number of reasons one is for uh, uh, our sustainability and our resilience and to give stakeholders an opportunity to have a real stake in the good work of the association the second happy reason is that demand is increasing in the post-pandemic environment. We see new national IGFs. We see a number of IGFs adding a youth component. And so we're very pleased to see that 
the the desired effect of the support uh, is uh, is uh, being demonstrated. And then finally, as we judge the comment that uh, Nigel just made, is we're not complacent. We recognize we do have a healthy financial situation. Uh, for the months ahead and we want to use that opportunity to really make the most of uh, uh, broadening and making more uh, diverse the funding base and a lot of that is um, as mentioned earlier we went to players in the internet ecosystem with help from Brian Cute, we addressed uh, registries and registrars and we learned in some cases that though they are not giving directly to the IGFSA, at least one registry is using uh, the IGFSA's decisions on supporting uh, NRIs to make their own decisions on supporting them directly. And I will say also uh, with many thanks to Amrita, Henriette, other members of this executive committee, we are in communication with a number of business stakeholders, corporates who are considering uh, contributions. We have a lot of material explaining the value proposition for diverse uh, uh, stakeholder categories, particularly business. We're happy to share that with those of you that are in, an in, in, an, in a position to introduce us to maybe an employer or a, a, a company you might see in the corridors at the IGF uh, this week. Um, we would be delighted to talk to anybody about uh, how their contributions go to work uh, for this uh, ecosystem that we're all here to uh, support. And then finally, uh, the, I would say the spectrum ranges from these corporates, global companies, to your contributions as members and individuals as members. And you will see more direct appeals, uh, a, a judicious number of direct emails to um, IGF mailing lists and other stakeholders we know have an interest in our work uh, to encourage them to visit the website, make a contribution, and again, broaden the base of uh, and categories of stakeholders that feel they have a stake uh, in the work of the organization. So I really just wanted to um, highlight that while we're delighted to have a good basis of what I would call foundational contributors. Um, we are looking at every category of contributor and looking for your help with leads, introductions, and ideas on how we can continue to uh, broaden, um, broaden that base to make it uh, sustainable. So thanks very much. Thank you, Chris, for this contribution. And you uh, actually uh, already went to the following agenda item, that is fundraising, but it's very closely linked, of course. The uh, regular agenda item, so to speak, was approval of the annual budget based upon a recommendation by the executive committee. And we have not, uh, it's not exact science because our budget depends very much on the contributions we receive, but. I think it was already included in the presentation of the summary statement of, its, of the financial statement for the year that we intend to continue like that and to give our priority to the NRIs as we feel that's where we have most impact and what we heard from members here in the room seems to confirm that that really is welcome. It helps the NRIs to get off the ground and we will continue again to give a contribution to the UN IGF Trust Fund as that is also gives us as an association also legitimacy that we are a recognized donor with the United Nations. Uh, are there comments to these uh, amalgamated agenda items, the budget and the fundraising? Please, Vince. Yes. So it's Vince Surf again. Um, one thing I would uh, urge uh, the uh, IGFSA to consider uh, is summarizing the activities that uh, should get support, uh, generally speaking. And so here I'm thinking about the NRIs, I'm thinking about the schools that uh, we heard about earlier. There are, are a, a broad range of activities that are related to the IGF. 
and we should be drawing attention to potential funders of all of those activities, quite independent of what you're able to uh, fund on your own as a supporter association. I think drawing attention to these kinds of opportunities for a broad range of support would be very helpful and be in keeping with uh, your charter. Thank you for this. It's a very helpful suggestion. And I would also like to underline that with Clint Surf, he has the chair of the leadership panel, which is to work very closely with the IGF and in that sense, a very important advocate for also the IGFSA activities. And it's a very helpful suggestion. Are there other comments? Please. Um, just to add, we were also thinking of updating our website with the details of whom we've been funding so far, uh, year-wise, and so that, you know, the website is, people get more information when they come here, and we could also have it sent to potential donors. So, because this is one feedback which Chris and us, we got from donors that, where have you been spending the money? What have you been doing? Uh, that's also one lesson which uh, Chris mentioned we learned. Uh, at least to present it properly to donors, what we've been doing. Thank you again, a very helpful comment. And I would also like to welcome Fiona, the other executive committee member who has joined us. And I should mention also Joyce, who is with us online. And Chris, you have already seen uh, joining us online. Are there other comments on this? So I take it we get the approval of the membership to continue in this line and the message I get and to leave that to the new executive committee members also to consider contributions to the schools on internet governance. That seems to be a, a strong message I take back from this meeting. With that, I think uh, we can uh, move forward. Oh, there's one more. Yes, Jimson. Please. Please, <coughs> Gibson Ulufi. Yes, just to help our members to understand the process, you said you'll be stepping down as chair. So uh, when we, we have a new chair, so maybe you could enlighten our member people around. Right. Uh, as uh, I would say that under any other business, because I was asked the question now, I can also say that. The suggestion is we do have a quorum of uh, executive committee members so that we proceed to the election of the new chair of the executive committee immediately afterwards in an open session of the executive committee. We will close the general assembly and then open the meeting of the executive committee with one agenda item that would be election of the new chair. But with that, uh, can I ask then the membership to release the executive committee of obligations that is essentially agree that we have done all according to the bylaws and you are happy with the way and will not go to take a legal action against the board members for their activity. So that is under Swiss law, that is actually the Swiss term they use is discharge of the executive committee, but that's caused a lot of confusion. And then I found the more understandable English term that is release of obligations of the uh, board. Can I take it that you kindly will release us of our obligations and I see people nodding and I don't see anyone standing up and disagreeing. So I take it we have agreement of the membership on this uh, release of obligation, which is, as I said, important under Swiss law. If you have to present the annual report, people will look at whether we have done that. And with that, I come to any other business. Uh, one item would be that announce the, uh, well, the holding of an executive committee session immediately afterwards. I already done that. Are there any other items, any one of Joyce or Jennifer? Yes, please. Yes, thank, thank you, Marcus. Can we please show slide eight? <laughs> Oops, 
that can be possible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's already a preview in the Zoom room if you're already in the Zoom room. But if you're not already in the Zoom room, of course. Of course. <laughs> there you go. So that is, we would like to present special thanks to our outgoing chair, Marcus Coomer, who has been with the IGFSA <laughs> since its founding. Thank you. He has held uh, many, many roles in the internet uh, governance ecosystem, but specific to the IGFSA, he started um, as the secretary, and then we elected two chairs for two full terms, and we will miss you very, 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 very sorely. Marcus, we hope you stay on to advise us on all the things we need advice on, but many, many very special thanks to Marcus and a round of applause, please. Well, thank you very much for that. I'm very appreciative of this kind of support. And also, obviously, our thanks go to Eduardo, the colleague who is also stepping down now, comes to the end of his second term. With that, then, if there's no other, nobody else for the floor, we can then come to the closure of the General Assembly. So I declare closed the General Assembly 22, and I open a meeting of the Executive Committee. We have established that we have a quorum. We have Nigel, uh, Fiona, Amrita, Wisdom, and online we have Chris and uh, Joyce. Henriette uh, cannot be with us, but she had made it clear who her preference as a new chair would be, and I'm very happy to introduce Amrita as a candidate, and I propose that the Executive Committee approve her as a new chair by acclamation. With that, I'm happy to step down and hand over the microphone to Amrita. <laughs> Marcus is, uh, you know, as I said, uh, his entire thing is very difficult to kind of keep up to, as in, I've been pushed into it by Marcus and Adriette. <laughs> but uh, I look at all your support in terms of strengthening it, IGF, IGFSA, and I have a lot to learn. And Marcus has to be around. He can't just run away from things. Um, yes, and uh, as Chris mentioned, we need to look at more donors uh, and we need your support to actually reach out to people also because many times you all know a lot more people. If you can also tell us whom we should go to, as in we will definitely try, but that would also help. Uh, even small donations are good. Uh, if we also want to help the SIGs and others, we would definitely need more money. And we thank the don donations coming from Google, ICANN, and the NROs, but others are also welcome. So we look forward to working together. And Marcus, you have to be there. <laughs> and we need a group photograph, Jen, all of us. Yes, we need to close the meeting. And any feedbacks, any uh, things which you find is not suitable or needs improvement, please let us know anytime. I think this is quite important. Uh, thank you so much for all that you've done. In our association, we have a protocol. We retain uh, the past chair, just as you mentioned, you know, just to retain the institutional memory. Uh, Marcos has lo is loaded. So I don't know what kind of uh, readjustment we need to do, but I want to propose that uh, we should have a kind of uh, a, a standard of retaining the chair. Thank you. In advisory role. Thank you. I was just going to add to what uh, Jameson was saying to st uh, standard practice in terms of corporate governance. The previous chair, you don't, you don't just leave, but you're retained on, on an advisory capacity. So you don't, you don't for vote per se, but you, and you don't count as quorum, but you guide on issues. Thank you. Thanks for accepting.
Yes, he, ha he has no choice. <laughs> I, say, I, say for, I say only for him to accept. Yeah. <laughs> so he should be on record. Yes. Well, I'm happy. I, as, as I said to Amrita, I don't want to be a backseat driver, <laughs> but I'm happy to be uh, to give advice whenever I'm asked for. But I don't want to provide advice unless asked for. <laughs> 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 and anyway, I do un I do understand that uh, Amrita would like to a picture of. Uh, okay. But you also need a picture without me. <laughs> Everybody forward. Well, I don't know. I think it's it's okay. It's okay. And I would like to ask Vince to come up here. Also, it's very important to have your picture with us to show that to show to people that the important people take us seriously. <laughs> Please all, let's try and find... <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice job, Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. Yeah. And with that, if you can make it. And congratulations. Marcus, I don't know what I've gotten to, but I don't know. Nice meeting you. So, your name is? Kasia. Kasia. Okay. Put in a name. You are which country are you from? Uh, I'm from Pakistan, but I Pakistan. live in Oman. Okay. He's a global citizen. <laughs> global citizen. Okay. Well, very nice meeting you. But why didn't you apply when the elections were on? I don't know. I think. Uh, well, Jennifer is very. Here. I mean, we ah, need to have an online yeah. process. Yes. Yeah. Jennifer is very good. Yeah. Yeah.